At the weekend, I ran through a list of eight potential smart signings that Manchester United could do. I ran through the likes of Brennan Johnson from Nottingham Forest, from Jed Spence. Maybe names that aren't top of that list, the big marquee signings, but maybe smart signings United could make. And you seem to like the video. So what I'm going to do today is run through eight potential free transfer signings because I think this is a market where United have to get smart. And maybe there are some game-changing signings that we could make from the free transfer market to boost our squad in some key positions. I'm going to run through eight players, different types of players, defenders, midfielders, and attackers. You can let me know in the comments whether you would like any of these to join Manchester United because maybe some of them could be game changers. You let me know what you think in the comments. Make sure you go down to the comments. Don't add to the comments. Go down and subscribe to United People's TV if you do enjoy the video by the end of it or if you don't, just subscribe anyway. Well, you probably won't subscribe if you don't enjoy it. But let's, let's head into this one. And there's going to be a few names on this list, of course, that you will know about straight away. That's Usman Dembele, top of that list. Now, is the caveat I would say to start this video is some of these signings might fall into the category of, okay, that's the sort of signing we would have made under Ed Woodward. Is that the sort of signing that we really want to make for Manchester United now under Eric Ten Hag? Or is it a time that we sort of drew the line and stopped making these sorts of signings? That's going to be a debate that goes into the comments. But Usman Dembele, look, he's recovered from his injury woes that he's had for a long, long time. And he's turned in some serious numbers for Barcelona at the end of the season. There's been huge issues as to, as to whether or not he's going to agree to that new contract. And at the moment, he hasn't. But as I said, if you were to take a look at where he plays, play the majority on the right wing, some on the left wing. He's, a, he's got a little bit of versatility to his game. But if you're looking at where Manchester United are weak, we're weak on the right-hand side. I wouldn't, say he's, I wouldn't say he's incredibly versatile. But as a free transfer, would we do better than him in that position? Yeah, this is where he gets to a bit. You go, hmm, okay, really? He's got, he's got so many, he's had so many injuries, <laughs> injuries in his career. He's literally got two pages of injury uh, history updates on transfer marks. But when you look at his numbers here, when he's on form, there's a reason that they paid so much for him. I know it's worked out as a terrible signing for Barcelona, but they paid that much for Dembele for a reason. He's up there compared to the likes of Di Maria and Neymar. But look at those percentages, man. Assist top 1% for expected assists as well. Progressive carries, dribbles. He's excellent at bringing the ball forward. Would you take the risk on Dembele? Do you think his wages will be too much? You let me know what you think in the comments below because I think the Dembele one's an interesting debate and no doubt you'll argue in the comments. As is Christian Eriksen. Now, never did I expect to put this name on the list when he went to Brentford. But I tell you what, he showed at Brentford that he still has his real real class absolutely and the numbers don't lie top one percent there for shot creating actions expected assists for assists christian erickson as he showed here he, he really added a brand new dimension into a brentford team that had lacked that sort of quality we saw against man united the sorts of deliveries he was whipping in man the set pieces the corners there's no doubt that christian erickson could hold a role inside this manchester united squad but then you're looking at you've got bruno fernandez who's going to play there We've got probably Donny van der Beek who playing the number 10 role. Maybe Hannibal will get some time there. Is he the sort of signing that we need to make? Is it a luxury signing in a position where we don't particularly need to strengthen? You let me know what you think about Christian Eriksen, but it's certainly one to have a debate about. That's for sure. I suppose, as is Paolo Dybala. Now, if we're looking at names on this list who, who reek of the, um, the Woodward type signing, I think Dybala's name probably tops that list. He's leaving Juventus. He was in tears when he was... Uh, leaving the stadium in his last game. But his returns, there's some decent ones. That look, passes attempted. Look at that. Got 1% pass attempted in that. Pass completion, progressive passes, progressive carries, interceptions, shots, shot creating actions. You don't need to look at the stats to know what sort of player Dybala is. You know exactly who Dybala is. We're Spurs were linked with him ages ago. We were linked with him that summer as well. He's top class. But is he the sort of Big name signing doesn't necessarily suit what Manchester United need. I personally feel that's where Dybala falls into. But I don't think you can ignore him. You, you can't ignore the fact that he's available on a free transfer and not have a conversation about him. You let me know what you think in the comments below there. So that's Dembele, that's Eriksen, and that's Dybala. There's another attacker I want to add to that list. Out of all of these, maybe Belotti is the one that we really should be talking about the most. The 28-year-old... 28, 28 Given he's not had the best season with Torino, I think he's only got eight goals this season. But we need basically a backup striker for Cristiano Ronaldo. 
Now you can look at his injuries that he's had. He's missed a few. Well, he's missed like 18 games overall. The injuries are definitely a concern. No doubt whatsoever. But if you're looking at his striker, he's literally played 337 appearances as a centre forward and one as a supporting striker and two as an attacking midfielder. He is a pure out-and-out out centre forward. And as I said, free transfer 28. He may not have scored a ton of goals this year, but if we were to go back and we were to look through his career here at Torino, you know, scroll back. How far? I don't know. Don't remember how far. 2016, 17, 26 goals in 35 appearances. That was when his stock was at its highest. He's a goal scorer, man. And we need backup for Cristiano Ronaldo. Would that be a smart signing that we go and spend, and we don't have to spend anything on Andrea Bellotti, and then we can spend more on the likes of two central midfielders that we do need? Or maybe there's something in central midfield that we can come in on a free transfer. Someone like Quarantine Tolisso. Now, again, Tolisso is going to be one of those players that we could have spoken about him previously and maybe his stock would have been slightly higher because it, if you take a look at his injuries list, it, there might be a reason why he's on this. Is that coronavirus? I can relate. Is that coronavirus twice? I can relate to that as well. I had it three times though, so I win. All muscle fibers, calf problems. He's missed a few. He hasn't missed an incredible amount of games, but he has had a fair amount of injuries over the last year. But again, if you were to look at his numbers, he's not the deeper lying uh, ball winning midfielder that we need in any way, shape or form. Look at the players he's compared to there. Leon Goretzka, Yuri Tillemans, Sergei Milinkovic, Savic. But you can't argue with his returns going forward. Progressive passes, the top one percentile of progressive passes. Quite impressive. But do you think that his injury record would be a reason that you just have to rule out Tolisso? Would it be too much? I mean, he could end up being like an Owen Hargreaves V2. But if this is a summer where United have to be smart, I don't think we can just completely ignore and overlook the free transfer market because there might be some players in there. Now, this one could be one of those players. Dan Axel Zagadou. He is the uh, French centre-back who plays for Borussia Dortmund and the eagle-eyed cherries on this channel will know that we were linked with him back, I believe it was in January. We were linked with a move for him. Now, he's had some major injury problems, right? If you go down here, he's had torn knee ligaments. He's had ruptured knee ligaments. He's had knee surgery. He's had some big, big injuries. And that's really why he's only played, I think he's only started, what is it, 15 games he's played this season for Borussia Dortmund? Yeah, there you go. You scroll down there and you can see that. Only 15 appearances. But Manchester United needs strengthening at centre-back. You can let me know what you think about him. We go down here and we see what his, where his strengths have lay. He's tall as hell, so he's going to win the aerial battles. Decent with the passes attempted and like not so much with the passes completed. You can let me know what you think about this lad in the comments because I want United to go I want us to just go after our main targets personally when it comes to centre backs I think I would I really want us to go after Yuri and Timber you know about that if we don't want him then Pau Torres seems to be top of that list I think we have to sign players centre backs in particular for a profile so while Dan Axel Zagadou might be available I'm not sure it'd be the smartest move I think it'll be settling and I suppose the same thing could go for Luis Philippe now, Luis Philippe is another centre-back. I think he's going to be leaving Lazio after five, six years there. He's getting linked with a move away to I think it's Real Betis. I think it's Real Betis. He's had some injury problems this year, but not, not exactly. Not particularly. Last year, he had ankle surgery. That was a bit more serious. You can let me know what you think about him. I wouldn't put Luis Philippe down as a game-changing signing. Not in the same way that somebody like Dembele or... Ericsson could be, or Dybala, or Belotti could be, or even Tolisso. But he's somebody that I think we should at least have entertain a conversation about. In the same way here, that it's not the sexiest signing in the world if we went and we signed Sam Johnston. But I think it's probably one that we will do. It strikes me that Manchester United will be getting, not rid of Dean Henderson, but Dean Henderson will be, will be leaving the club either on loan or a permanent deal. And Sam Johnston bringing him back as a third choice goalkeeper behind... From Heaton behind David De Gea, it kind of makes sense. It's a, it will be a smart thing for United to do. But that's eight names there on that list. I ran through. We've got Usman Dembele, we've got Christian Eriksen, we've got Paolo Dybala, you've got Andrea Bellotti, Corentin Tolisso, Dan Axel Zagadou, you've got Luis Philippe, and as I said there, you've got Sam Johnson. Now, if I was to choose one of them off the top of my head. I would probably go for Andre Bellotti. I think he's a seasoned, hard-working, 
striker, pure centre forward. And I don't particularly think that United will have that much money to spend on a centre forward this summer. And we need one to be a good backup option for Ronaldo. I don't think he'd be the happiest man in the world to be a complete backup, but going from Torino to United, I think he'd be all right with that. Now, I think you could argue, if you really want to, I think you could have a case for Usman Dembele. I even think you could have a case for Christian Eriksen. I personally think it's a bit of a, a position where we're, we're kind of stacked, but you saw how much quality he added to that Brentford team. Could he come in and effectively kind of have a one matter role inside that squad, but maybe slightly more beneficial to us? And I personally think that the Dybala situation strikes me as one of those signings that could have happened under Woodward that probably won't happen now. But you can't deny that he's a top-class player. But what about Talisa? As I said... There's eight names I've given you there from the list. And there, there are loads more on that list. Frank Kessie is obviously joining Barcelona from AC Milan. That's one I think we could have got. But Bukar Kamara was another free transfer. Both of those have already gone. Do you think United should be going after anybody in the transfer market? And what about those eight names that I've mentioned there? You let me know in the comments below, as you always do. Make sure you subscribe to United People's TV. How nice is this, by the way? Given to me by Fred, one of the subscribers. I think it's the 88 Holland shirt. I'm representing the Dutch inside me now. Big up to you, Fred. And let me know what you think in the comments about a shirt and about the free transfers.